Hello Internet, it's Jeff here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff Heyer. I'm a media producer originally from Montana and I am obsessed with traveling. On this channel, I answer the big questions that get asked me about my travels. There's an emphasis on natural and wildlife experiences, which is why most of my content falls under this category of travel. I'm talking about safaris, ecotourism, and the topic I'm going to be talking about today. I am stoked to be sharing with you the best experience I have ever had. I'm so stoked I even put on my green safari shirt to talk about it. And yes, you heard me, the best experience. Not one of the best, the best. I'm talking about gorilla trekking in the windy impenetrable forest in Uganda. If you want to know what gorilla trekking is like, how strenuous it is, how much it costs, which travel company to book through, you are in the right place because I'm going to be answering all those questions in this video. Before I start, I want to talk about why I went and why I chose to do this experience. What was so compelling about gorilla trekking that made me travel all the way around the world to march into the jungle in order to see wild gorillas in their natural habitat? For those of you who don't know, I've been a wildlife fanatic my entire life. This trip was a lifetime in the making and I'm so grateful I was able to do this experience in the summer of 2021. So why gorilla trekking in particular? The first and main reason is that I am fascinated by gorillas. The resemblance we share between humans and gorillas allows our species to connect with our ancestors and the natural world, which is what makes gorilla trekking such a powerful and emotional experience for many. Not only that, but I am fascinated by the history behind the gorilla ecotourism project and how naturalists in the late 60s, early 70s, including the famous Diane Fossey, established the gorilla trekking project, which allows visitors like us to go to places like Uganda and Rwanda to visit gorillas in their natural habitat. I am fascinated by the concept of ecotourism, which is something I really, really want to dive into in 2022. This concept is talking about how tourism dollars help support conservation projects and also benefit the surrounding communities that live next to these pristine environments. And for those reasons and many, many more, that is why I chose to go embark on this adventure in the depths of the rainforest of Uganda. So let's get into it. All right, so what did my trip look like and what was my itinerary? My sister, my future brother-in-law, and myself went to East Africa for a month-long trip. The focus of this trip was wildlife. On this journey, we visited Kenya, Tanzania, and spent a week in Uganda. The reason we went to Uganda was, of course, to see the gorillas, the main draw for tourism in this country. During our week in Uganda, we traveled to Bowindi Impenetrable Forest, which is a large protected area in the southwest corner of the country. This is one of the few places in the world where wild mountain gorillas still reside. We flew into Entebbe, which is the only international airport in the country, and drove nine plus hours to Bowindi. The drive itself is very scenic. You'll see lots of tea farms, lots of smiling faces waving to you from the road. There's lots to see. It's a little bit of a bumpy journey, but a fun one nonetheless. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> And we first arrived to Rahisha, which is one of four checkpoints at Bowindi Impenetrable Forest. These four checkpoints are where tourists go to start their gorilla treks. And from there, all the groups disperse to find their assigned gorilla families. Rahisha, to my knowledge, is the one that has the highest elevation, which is why the gorilla trekking there is categorized as difficult. One reason for this is because you start at a high elevation. Oftentimes the treks start with a steep descent into the valley, which was the case for us. And the only way back out of the valley after the trek is over is to hike back up the mountain. We stayed at the Bakiga Lodge in Rahija, which was fantastic. We were actually the only guests checked into this hotel at the time due to low COVID tourism rates. And from there, we drove about 10 minutes the following morning to start our gorilla trek from the Rahisha checkpoint. Before I talk about the trek itself, I'll talk about Bahoma, the second checkpoint in which we started. This is the most popular checkpoint for tourists to start their gorilla trekking. If you're going to do this for one day, this is the most likely checkpoint you will be starting at. Most of the lodges and accommodation options are located in Bahoma. This is also where the flattest and easiest terrain is. This allows for easy access for tourists to hike into the forest and visit 
visit their assigned gorilla families. So back to Rahija where we started. This one is a little bit more strenuous. I don't think that starting at this point should scare anyone off. There was plenty of people in the older age category who were perfectly capable of hiking in this terrain. It totally depends on your personal physical capabilities. Rahija might be a little bit more complicated than starting at Bahoma. So when we're at the Rahija checkpoint, this is when you really start to get excited. It's starting to feel real. This is where all the tourists gather at eight o'clock in the morning. Everyone starts there and that is where you meet your guide who's going to take you to the family of gorillas. We were assigned the Orizogo family, so before our trek, our guide explained to us the family members, who are we going to meet, and where are we going to find them. The guide is going to help take you to the trackers, who have left even earlier in the morning to go find the families for you. The trackers and the guides are communicating with each other during the trek in order to help steer the tourists closer and closer to the gorillas. This is essential to the process because gorillas are often on the move, so where they are at the beginning of your hike might not be where they are when you finally find them. In addition to your your guide, you will also meet your porters, and these are the people who will be carrying whatever you want during the trek. You can give them your backpack, your camera equipment, whatever it is you want them to carry, they will. And the fee for that in Uganda at the current moment is only 15 US dollars. So is it worth it for you to have someone carry all your stuff through the jungle? Depends on how much you're taking. We chose not to have a porter with us because we did travel light, but for other groups, you might want bigger cameras, you might want more stuff, more water, more food, what have you. Just know that this service is available. So I'm with my sister and future brother-in-law and we start our first hike. Much to our surprise, we were the only people in our trekking group. The group sizes are no more than eight. There is a strict cap on how many people can be in a group, and that is eight people. Luckily for us, when we went the summer of 2021, COVID tourism rates were much lower, and we ended up going on our own private group with just us three. So it's us three, we're with a guide, a guard, and they are going to take us to the two trackers who are trying to follow the gorilla families into the forest and communicate with us for where we need to go. The first day of hiking was not easy per se. This hike I would not say is for the faint of heart. It was very challenging and it was very steep and very wet. There was a huge thunderstorm the previous night. The storm was so intense that I was worried we weren't going to be able to do the trek the following morning, but because this is the rainforest apparently it's very normal for that to happen. So we then descend straight down into the valley and we already know that this is going to be an adventure to say the least. Our guide's name was Gloria and she led the pack forward. She was macheting the thick vegetation in our way in order to get us a direct path to the gorilla family. During the hike, you're going to get swacked in the face by branches, you're going to potentially, like myself, touch mysterious things that might blister your hand for a hot second. Don't be fooled, the excitement has not died. In fact, just the opposite, because every step we take through this dense jungle, we're a step closer to the gorillas. <laughs> the dress code is pretty strict. You need to wear tall socks so you can tuck in your pants into them to avoid ants crawling up your pants. Rain jackets are highly recommended because you never know when the rain might surprise you. Even if at the beginning of your hike it is bright and sunny and warm, halfway through it could become a torrential rainstorm. So on our hike it's very damp, it's very wet. You're feet are sinking into some thick mud. It's difficult, but it's really fun. And we did, you know, I would consider our group to be like pretty athletically inclined. And this hike was perfect for us. It was a nice challenge and very rewarding when we finally found the gorilla family. So when we met with the trackers in the rainforest, we suddenly realized this must mean we are very close to the gorillas. And that moment you finally see one in the distance of the rainforest after a long strenuous hike, I can tell you it is something that you will never forget.
Your trackers will help you step by step for how to behave around the gorillas and remind you how far you should stay away from them. They are highly trained individuals who know exactly how to act without getting the animals aggravated or stressed when visitors are viewing them. Given the world situation at the moment, you are required to wear a mask. A lot of human diseases are transferable to great apes, including gorillas. And if you didn't know this already, diseases like Ebola have wiped out entire groups. And so it's very strict that you comply with wearing a mask during these gorilla trekking experiences because you don't wanna risk virus exposure to the wildlife. Once you're with your assigned gorilla family, you are given one hour to spend time with them. A very strict hour. No more, no less. It is such an amazing hour. I'd say that is a very solid piece of time. You don't feel, sorry, my dog. This hour will go by so quickly. Make sure you balance your time taking photos while also enjoying the moment. I can't express enough how incredible it is. It was a pleasure to meet the Orizogo family. We saw the silverback, the blackbacks, the mothers, the babies. We saw the whole family tree. For the first 30 minutes of our hour, they were on the move. So a lot of it was just keeping up with them in order to maintain a view. So just like that, your hour is up and it's time to say goodbye to the gorillas. Um, it is a hard goodbye, but a really wonderful goodbye at the same time. That was so good. That was everything I had dreamt of and more. I cannot get enough of this. So once your hour is up, you are then going to say goodbye to your trackers. They are the ones who found the gorillas for you and they deserve a very hefty tip. So make sure you bring some cash in order to reward them and thank them for taking you to this family of gorillas. Then the guides and the porters and your guard will help take you out of the rainforest and back to your checkpoint. This whole experience takes place in the morning. It sometimes can go into the afternoon depending how long your trek is. But overall, the windy and penetrable forest is actually not that big compared to some of the national parks I'm used to in the US, this experience only lasts a full morning. After that experience, you go back to the checkpoint and you're rewarded with a gorilla trekking certificate, which has your name on it and proves that you had this experience and did it. You did the gorilla trek. It's a fun little graduation ceremony where you get to take home a souvenir. So after this trek, we spent the rest of our day in Rohingya exploring the little town up there, buying some souvenirs, and then we headed to Bahoma for the night before our next gorilla trek. So like I said, Bahoma was a much easier trek. I think our total walking time for this trek was only about 35 minutes minutes. One thing to know is that you have no idea how long the hike is going to take. You don't know where the gorillas are going to be in the forest when your hiking time comes. So in our case in Pahoma, we found the gorillas very quickly. And during our trek, our guide actually was stalling, talking about the plants and talking about the trees in order to give us more bang for our buck, maybe? Something that was really funny is that when we found the gorilla family, we then recognized just up on the hill where we were viewing them, a really familiar building. And then we looked at it twice and realized that is the lodge we're staying in. Had we known the gorillas were going to be right in our backyard, we probably wouldn't have even gone on the gorilla trek. We would have just looked from our balconies and watched the gorillas from our porch. So that was a very common moment and compared to day one which was a heart of darkness style of trek this one was much much easier for this reason and more this is why most people start their treks in Bahoma chances are if you're booking one day of gorilla trekking you're going to be assigned to the Bahoma checkpoint and this is where you're going to be doing your gorilla trek there's lots and lots of shops lots of souvenirs lots of lodges that is where the most obvious tourism trail is all right so that was what my trip looked like it was two days it was two families two gorilla treks now let's talk about the logistics so a big question i get is who did i book this experience through there are many many tour operators in east africa that pretty much offer the same experiences you contact the tour operator you tell them where in the country you want to go what safari parks you want to visit and then you kind of go back and forth with what level of accommodation you want to have is it going to be basic moderate or luxury and eventually you design together a tailor-made custom safari trip however i did a lot of research in order to find the tour operator for me and by a lot i mean i was actively designing trips with about four to five companies before i decided to go with monkey adventures monkey adventures is an east africa tour operator their headquarters are in arusha tanzania but they service trips all around kenya uganda as well as tanzania so actually our entire trip to east africa was through this company so when we were in kenya our trip was designed by a kenyan tour advisor at monkey adventures and guided by one of their kenyan drivers likewise our time in uganda 
Uganda was designed by the Ugandan travel advisor and guided by one of their Ugandan drivers. The tour leader or tour planner essentially is the one you are corresponding with. They are the one who plans it for you, books the accommodations on your behalf. They pretty much do the whole trip for you and they service a guide to take you to all those places. I cannot recommend enough how amazing Monkey Adventures treated us. They did an excellent job and for the value of our money, it was incredible. Our tour planner's name was Paul. He was my first friend I made in Uganda. He picked me up from the airport and I actually, because I got there earlier than my sister and brother-in-law, he was my friend for the first two days. He took me around town. He did all sorts of stuff. We got to know each other and it was a great connection to make in a new country for me. And Paul went above and beyond to make sure we had a wonderful experience. In fact, one thing I am forever indebted to him for is when my ATM card was taken from an ATM during a power outage, he was able to get it back for me before I even left the country. And for those of you who don't know, administration in East Africa can be a little slow. It's also known as pole pole, which means slowly slowly. However, Paul was able to manage and navigate this whole banking system in the four days I was there in order to get it back to me. He worked really hard to communicate with the banks and whatnot and you know he didn't have to do that for me but he did because he wanted to make sure I had a positive experience. So I owe everything to Paul. And Paul now has his own tour operator called Gorilla O'Clock. He's branched off from Monkey Adventures and started his own, which I congratulate him for. And I highly recommend if you want to go to Uganda and go on a gorilla trekking experience or a safari that you book it through him. I have vetted him and I highly recommend. If you want to get in contact with him, I put the link to his new website below or you can reach out to me and I will put you two in contact because trust me, you are in good hands. Meanwhile, there's Charles and Charles is our guide. He's our driver. He's the one who takes us from Entebbe and toured us all around Uganda. He's the one who took us to a to Bahoma and he is the best. He's a bundle of joy. I honestly have never met anyone who's happier. I highly, highly recommend that you request Charles as your driver. He is so funny. He knows everything about everything in Uganda and he's very easy to communicate with. I really recommend Monkey Adventures. I will say after going to Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania with the same tour operator, the Ugandan side of this experience set the standard. They are unbeatable in that sense. So with that said, that is how I did the trip. And now let's talk about cost. So gorilla trekking is a very expensive experience. It's very exclusive. And like I said, only eight people can visit one family in a given day. In Bawindi Impenetrable Forest, there are 19 gorilla families that are habituated, which means tourists can go and actively hike out and visit them. The other gorilla families in the park are not habituated, which means you are not able to go visit them. But to my knowledge, there are currently 19 families that you're able to do this with. These families are deemed safe enough for tourists to visit. They have been habituated by researchers and naturalists for over three years to ensure that you have a safe experience when you visit your families. So if you do some quick math, that is 19 families, nine people per family maximum, and that is a total of 152 people that can go gorilla trekking in Bawindi and Penetrable Forest in a given day. And because you can only do this once a day, that is the cap for tourists that can go and have this experience. This is for many reasons why it is an expensive thing to do. One gorilla trekking permit to step into the park and visit your assigned family for one hour is 700 US dollars. This price fluctuates sometimes. It's been 800 before in the busiest seasons. Sometimes this price goes up in peak seasons, such as July and August. It really does fluctuate and a big thing that keeps changing the number of course is the growing COVID situation. When I went in summer of 2021, this is the first period of time people in the United States anyway were able to leave the country and travel internationally again. This is why we only had three people in our first gorilla trekking group. This is why the price for us was actually much cheaper than normal. We were very lucky because when we did it in June of 2021, they had a deal essentially um, offering half price gorilla trekking permits which allowed us to do two days for the price of one and I know this isn't a common thing and we were very lucky at the time and right now it's currently set 700 US dollars but just know that this price point is there because it's one an exclusive experience two because they can't have too many people visiting the gorilla families at a given time and three it's going right back into the park itself by paying for this permit you are actively contributing to wildlife conservation and conservation of the park itself. This pays for the protection and the maintenance and all the work involved in order to maintain this pristine wilderness. Knowing this, I was absolutely okay with justifying that price. 
So that leads me to a quick discussion about Uganda and Rwanda. Which country should you go do your gorilla trekking experience in? One big difference between these two places is the gorilla trekking price in these countries. In Uganda, it is much cheaper at 700 US dollars and in Rwanda, it's much more expensive. And right now it's at 1500 US dollars. So it's a very, very hefty price tag for one gorilla trek. Now I haven't been to Rwanda before. Trust me, it is on my list and I really, really want to go. So I can't actually compare what the environment is like, but based on my knowledge and what I've seen and heard from other people, these experiences in Rwanda are much easier trekking experiences. I mean, Rwanda really set the legend for this gorilla trekking experience. This is where it all started. This is where Diane Fossey and the earliest researchers spent the majority of their time. It is in Rwanda where you can find and visit the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. There's a new campus being built for visitors to come visit that is sponsored by Ellen DeGeneres. So on the more historical aspect of things, Rwanda has that. And this is really where it all started. Uganda as a nation realizing that they have these very valuable gorillas that can attract tourists, quickly adapted these same projects into their own national parks. Mind you that many of the earliest researchers and naturalists spent time in the neighboring DRC and Uganda to the north. They were not exclusive to Rwanda, but that is where they did spend the majority of their time. It is the birthplace of gorilla trekking. So why did I go to Uganda? Given the world situation in 2021, it was actually easier to enter Uganda as a US citizen. Rwanda at the time required more from visitors in order to enter the country. There were just more COVID protocols in place. It was a little bit more complicated to get there and of course, course, it was much more expensive to get a gorilla trekking permit. So it just made sense that we choose Uganda for this trip. Trust me, I am dying to have this experience in Rwanda so I can accurately compare the two. But if you're unsure which one to pick right now, I can assure you that Uganda is a very safe choice. Aside from the gorilla trekking costs, the lodges are very reasonable. There is basic, moderate, and luxurious accommodation styles. So whichever one fits you best, that's up to you. You do have to pay the tour operators to take you on these journeys. And you should budget a fair amount of cash to give the gorilla trackers, the gorilla guide, and the porters if you choose to have them carry your stuff for the trek. And of course, you should eventually tip your driver for taking you to the Windy Impenetrable Forest in the first place. Tipping is a very important courtesy and I highly recommend you do tip all the people who help you have this amazing, magical experience. So that is all I'm gonna cover on this topic today. If you enjoyed this video and wanna know more about my wildlife experiences, subscribe to this channel. Thank you to everyone who continues to support my creative journey. I really, really am hoping to make it back to East Africa sometime this year. As you know, I visited two of the four checkpoints in Bawindi and trust me I want to go back and experience the other two so badly. I know I just went last year but this is something I'm so passionate about and would do anything to make it happen again. I hope this video offered a little bit of insight and inspiration for you in order to plan your dream gorilla trekking experience. If you have any questions please don't hesitate in reaching out to me. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jeff and I hope you have a wonderful gorilla trekking experience. Safe travels. Thank mm -hmm. you.